Welcome to Power Hour on DCU FM Review, Friday night at 8pm. Um, I've got the most interesting people I can trick into coming on the show every week. Um, this week I have uh, Owen McConnellog, a um, lecturer here in DCU and a researcher in the fields of uh, predictive analytics and health sciences, more specifically relating to artificial intelligence. And if you'd just like to introduce yourself there, fire right ahead. Yeah, cool. How's it going? My name is Owen McConlogue. I'm a lecturer and a researcher here in DCU. I will slightly correct you. So I'm not literally, I'm not uh, purely folk research in AI. Okay. But what I research is a complement to AI. So okay, it's the, perfect. It, it, it's the building blocks to it eventually. It's not, it wasn't my, my, my the genesis of my research. Okay, I get you. I get it's an you. After, after effect. But um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So before we get into the discussion of what actually is artificial intelligence and its applications and how it's developed and so on and so forth, I'd like to ask you a very, very simple question first, so we're all on the same page, of what actually is a computer? Hmm, okay, very fair question. Um, well, I'm going to kind of slightly rob an answer that I heard recently on Sam Harris's podcast. And to begin by saying that it's something that we all have, it's something we all interact We all have one in our pocket every day. We use it every waking minute of the day even if we're not directly looking at it on our smartphones um, but the more basic straight to answer would be it's anything that can complete a task anything that can answer a set of uh, directions that it's given reply to a set of directions that's given think of the example when I first started studying computing in, um, in the introductory book to Java it starts out by explaining what programming is and it explains programming by using the analogy of following a recipe to bake a cake. Okay. So anything that can follow a set of instructions with an ultimate output is something that's being so computed. So it's a set of input, the in computing input, is input, in the something middle. magic in the middle and there's an output. Okay. So if you can make something into a process, a business process even, whatever yeah. it may be, if you, and, you, and if you can automate that, the machine or the entity that does the automation is a computer. So it's the automation of the process yeah, of yeah, what turns yeah. input into output yeah, is a computer. Yeah, yeah. automation um, process. Perfect. And then I think the only other thing to that would be then, uh, I heard a definition of what is intelligence. And intelligence mm. of what I've heard it very loosely defined as something along the lines of the capability to learn and apply um, new information. Mm. Yeah, that's the best way I've heard it described. Yeah, and yeah. artificial intelligence, um, it takes another meaning on altogether. Is supposedly it's somewhere in between that input and the process in the middle and the output, and a kind of um, that merging with the capability of uh, this this learning of new material and applying it to again uh, to provide another output. Um, would you have any? kind of roundabout or more accurate definition of what is artificial intelligence of what is artificial intelligence yes specifically. okay well i suppose the first thing you'd have to do is like as employing the the kind of the researcher's skill is to break it down and look at artificial and look at intelligence okay so at intelligence itself there is no unified universal definition of it it's a it's a it's part of the human story there are different forms of intelligence there's emotional intelligence there's emotional, spatial intelligence. yeah there's, okay there's, get you there's creative intelligence um but you're right in what you're saying no matter what area of intelligence you're talking about insofar as there is any kind of common understanding or agreement it is that process of acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and getting building blocks side by side with that you have, you have the question what is artificial intelligence well what is artificial it's something that's replicated and it, in as true a form as possible to whatever it was first based against. So artificial grass is a replication of real glass. Real, gla real grass, okay, sorry, I guess I you say. Yeah. So artificial intelligence is the human effort to recreate what we perceive as intelligence, at least as, as well as we can. Um, but again, it's, it's worth noting, just as there is no universal definition or an agree or new, universal agreement in a definition of intelligence, there's no perfect agreement in a definition of artificial intelligence. Okay, I get you. Perfect. Um, so it's still something where the jury's out on. Yeah, which means yeah. we're not too late to the story. Not too late to the story. Perfect. We're getting in ahead of the bunch. Yeah. Um, either that'll make us sound very, very insightful years in advance or very, <laughs> very ignorant. I don't know which. Um, 
Perfect. Before we go, uh, I know there's there's these great examples of um, artificial intelligence. What was it? Was it Deep Blue who bet uh, Bobby Fischer yeah. at chess? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. there's the uh, the Deep Mind program yeah. that played Go. I've no idea how to play Go. Yeah, I'm yeah, very neither. unfamiliar me with neither. it. But before we go into those very specific applications of uh, be the best Go player in the world, be the best chess player in the world, so on and so forth, is there any kind of what might regular people your average person what kind of interaction would they have with artificial intelligence in their day to day lives um, well let's answer that question by going back to the original question and looking at the definition of artificial intelligence because as is the case with language society takes a term and they make it their own so once upon a time artificial intelligence meant nothing more than this goal of creating something that was equal to people but when we saw things get automated in society like like airplanes, like the, the autopilot in an airplane, that yeah. now gets perceived as a form of artificial intelligence, as does your Google search engine, as does anything that's how, how, how is the Google search engine a form of artificial intelligence? Because it's building, uh, it's built, well, for when you type in a word and you get the end of a sentence given back to you, that's built oh, off okay. of intelligence, it's learned, it's acquired, it's, it's kind of making knowledge. An, an assumption and based is, on, yeah, yeah, based on the knowledge it's acquired, i.e., you know, go back to the definition and then of intelligence. It's applying that knowledge that it has learned, yeah, to, for the most likely thing that so, we yeah. could so say, then, yeah. So then, so we have artificial intelligence, but you're asking how do, pe- how do people interact with that on a day to day basis? People, if we're going to get specific about it, at the moment, there is a unified agreement on temporary definitions. So let's get rid of the idea of artificial intelligence for a second. Okay. You've got artificial narrow intelligence, and then you've got artificial general intelligence, and then you've got artificial super intelligence. Okay. And let's not worry about that last one super for a while. Just for a minute, yeah. Yeah. Narrow intelligence relates to things that literally perform tasks better than any human being, but it's all they can do, like your calculator. Your calculator is a form of ANI, artificial narrow intelligence, and it's a it's better at calculating than any human that exists. Well, ever, yeah, okay. absolutely, and as is the same for a search engine, it's better. Than, it's going to search for anything quicker than any human will. You know, it's, I get you. Yeah, uh, yeah, narrow intelligence will always be better at one thing than all people, but no more than one thing. And um, we haven't got to general intelligence. AGI, which was once upon a time what AI was considered. It's kind of that HAL in a space yeah. odyssey. It's that, it's that, yeah, yeah, it's that human level. It's I, when, I remember when I spoke about this in one of the lectures, I, I kind of described the difference between me and you talking right now, and if I pick up this pen and throw it at you, you can continue to talk to me, can, can understand our conversation, and try to catch the pen. So you're being absolutely human in that sense. Okay. You're, you're, you're computing two things nearly at the same time. Narrow intelligence, can't, can't, narrow intelligence can't do that. Narrow intelligence would be the one trick pony. Of narrow it. intelligence will get hit by the pen. Gotcha. Simple as, but it'll still be better at computing. And to go back again, I, I'm going to bounce away from your question many times, but to get back to your question, what in, intelligence, what ANI do we uh, work with on a daily basis? A hell of a lot. Our cars, if you've got an automated car, if you're using any, any form of e-health systems at all, if you've got a Fitbit or something like that, if you're using... Um, digital systems in your home, like the new uh, Amazon tools and the new Google Android any tools, those, the, any, the the yeah, any of the smart the home, yeah, any the smart home tools. That's yeah. you using an ar- a narrow intelligence, specifically, and it's, it's assistive technology. Um, if you're using forms of VR, if you're using forms of gaming, does it? I know there's, I can't n- think of the name off my head right, off the top of my head right now, but there's a game that's after being released that was built by AI engineers that the engineers will never actually be able to visit every level in it because the game replicates and builds its own levels inside okay. of it. Yeah. Um, so that's you know it's in gaming basically is my point. There's a really cool thing that I only came across recently called the Coco app. Okay. And what it is is, it's an app that is looking at helping people it's an it's an ANI app artificial narrow intelligence app narrow intelligence app that's looking at helping the help people who have emotional distress issues so it's taken AI technology and gone away from purely tech solutions to human solutions it's almost an emotional intelligence side of things yeah so what it does is someone picks up an app picks up the coco app k o k o is the how you spell it you type in a worry that you might have Let's say you're distressed or you have anxiety about something. Let's okay. just say it's getting through exams or something like that. I don't know. And you post your anxiety issue or your problem, and it gets sent anonymously to all users. And the intelligence system behind the app offers it to people who might be best suited to offer help with the issue. And then you get anonymous help on an issue. The intelligence system also gets rid of any bad actors in there. That's really interesting. So it's almost like um, a Google search, but for a more 
maybe philosophical is the wrong word, but almost a subjective kind of yeah. issue, an emotional yeah. issue as opposed to an intelligence issue. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's a, it's a beautiful it's it's beautiful that people are starting to realise some of the other applications to artificial forms of intelligence. Yeah. That's more than just how can I whatever I don't know automate a process in the morning in my house or automate a process on you know what can save me the most time yeah yeah yeah. what about saving my mental state you know that's yeah it's a nice philanthropic effort yeah 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 yeah. so that's cool that's incredible and then so that would be artificial narrow intelligence that's that's probably the most common form of intelligence that um you or me or anybody else would interact with on a daily basis yeah um my question is you mentioned that we haven't actually made it to artificial uh, general intelligence quite yet my question to you would be where do you see it going do you, first of all do you see us getting there um, and second of all um, how do you see it happening um, where do I see it I'll, I'll, I'll go with how it, how it can possibly happen first just because it's easier to to tackle that first of all because the first question we, we can go for hours on that yeah like, um, as far as where it can where it could go, but where, how it gets there is long. The long, long answer made short, short is two steps. Number one, the f- the fact that we have big data, data sets. Yeah. And then number two, the fact that we have this thing called machine learning. So, if you go back to the definition of intelligence, intelligence is about acquiring information and applying it. Yeah. And applying it right. Um. So, to get. To, te- to create intelligent systems, we need lots of examples to learn from, just okay. like a human does. And then we need a brain that can consume the examples, pick the good examples from the bad examples, and become yeah. intelligent. Well, that's really interesting because what I was reading about the Google DeepMind project and their... I, I don't know if they had a specific name for the um, program or artificial intelligence kind of unit they had for it. But the first thing it did before it decided to become the best Go player possible was it it analyzed, it could have been 100,000 amateur games of Go um, from skilled amateurs. Hmm. So it learned um, everything from the basic rules of the game to how maybe more advanced players would play. And then not only that, did it learn um, the rules, its understanding, and kind of a basic game theory. It then played itself about 30 million hmm. times. Hmm. I don't know how long that took, mind you, but it played <laughs> itself 30 million times. Yeah. So it was constantly improving and beating past versions of itself up until the f- point where they put it against the go grand master world champion whatever you want to call yeah, it yeah, and then yeah. it eventually bet him yeah that's the google deep mind so like yeah. if we want that's 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 a really strong example of strong ani and a kind of a machine learning approach to absolutely it. and if we want to get to that agi we need the big data we need the machine learning but then there's one there's one really secret ingredient we can have all the big data, and which, if, if people don't understand what that means, just think of lots and lots of examples. It's how Facebook tracks literally everything about yeah. you and how you the, yeah. uh, might might Google good, nice hotels in Rome, and then the next yeah. time you go on your Facebook, oh, wait, it's advertising hotels in Rome. Yeah, so uh, we've got lots of examples, and we've got this idea called machine learning, which is basically the idea of just building lots and lots of lots and lots of intelligent boxes that you push big data into, it learns, and it becomes intelligent. So that's one part, that's like the main part of getting to AGI. But the second equally important part of it is that it's the speed of computation. So at the moment, humans think at 10 to the power 16 thoughts per second, okay? Okay. And until we get a machine that can learn big data. That's what, about about a a million thoughts, 100,000 thoughts? Sure. Something like that. One of those two. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. But, uh, uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so that we, we think at 10 to the power of 16 thoughts per second. Until we, no matter how many, no matter how much big data we have and no matter, how, no matter how good our machine learning is, until we have a system that computes at the same speed, we won't have true artificial general intelligence. At the moment, the nearest thing to us is about 20 times slower than us. Okay, and, and what, what, is, China. What, what, what is that? Is it's, that a, it's a supercomputer. It's anything, a supercomputer. Anything okay. that works super fast is a supercomputer. Computer. Okay, but this, this is still a... Is this even an artificial narrow intelligence that's computing it's this 20 there, times it's slower? It's an absolute high form of it. It's, it's the yeah. pinnacle of it, but it, it can't be anything other than that until it gets to our speed. And until okay. it gets to our speed, we ain't got no general intelligence. Okay, I get you. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. So, so, so we're still a long way off the artificial general intelligence. The, um, 
well, yeah, the, the, the almost the HAL in uh, Space Odyssey it, or the the Terminator kind to of. Say, to, 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 yeah, to say we're a long way off is it, 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 is an interesting question to bring up because we've done an awful lot in the last say two hundred years compared yeah. to the last say five six hundred years, um, and it, I don't know if, if if you've heard of a guy called Nick Bostrom. No. Uh, Nick Bostrom is a philosopher in I think he's in Cambridge, either Cambridge or Oxford. Um, and he, he has purposely gone and surveyed some of the leaders in AI around the planet and he said look give me your idea of when AGI arrives when does general, general intelligence arrives yeah. and then counteracting this you got Ray Kurzweil who's a futurist he's, works, he's, a, one of the, he's a chief engineer uh, in Google I have heard of his name actually yeah and he, uh, he has his own theory of when AGI arrives and they're both kind of countering each other because Nick Bostrom's trying to be the pessimistic guy Kurzweil's super optimistic and he's just saying it's coming really quick. Long story short, if you look at their two data sets, according to them, it's either going to happen in 2029 okay, or latest projection 2060. Well, it's very interesting because it's often said that, what is it, mankind, um, they underestimate the progress they're going to make in the next two years and grossly overestimate the progress they're going to make in the next 10 years. That's, 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 <laughs> do you know what? That's, that's a hell of a time horizon is 2029 yeah, to 2060. Absolutely. That's a projection of the next, what, 12 years to the next, um, God, Matt's going to let me down, 33 yeah, yeah. years. That's yeah. a hell of a margin of error to have. Yeah, um, it, it is. But in, in the course of the human story, it's not. Well, I'd like I, 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 the argument that I heard um, Sam Harris make. Uh, he's a philosopher and a neuroscientist. If you mm. haven't heard of him, he makes some very excellent podcasts on the topic. Um, I'd advise you to check him out. But he did a TED Talk, and his argument was that if everybody was given, um, let's say 50, let's, call it, let's, let's even call it 33 years, the long-term projection or the uh, the is that the optimistic or the pessimistic um, the attitude to uh, AGI? Yeah, that's a good question. Is, yeah. it, is it optimistic or pessimistic? We'll get, we'll, we'll it, get to that. On your we views, will get to that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But he said, if you told somebody that in 33 years' time or 30 years' time that there's going to be a massive, wide-scale drought that's going to kill millions, we'd start preparing for that. Mm. And we'd take that very seriously. Or if mm. it was an earthquake or if it was a tsunami, we would take um, whatever precautions we could um, mm. to do our best to counteract this because it is something that's kind of close to our hearts and it's something that's um, very applicable to kind of the human experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like the rise of an artificial general intelligence or an artificial super intelligence, which again, we'll get back to that, um, if, 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 it, if it helps you at all think of watching the terminator or something like that um that people because it's not something we've had experience with or, not, or something that's not exactly very applicable to our everyday lives as we know it um it's not something that's taken very seriously yeah. um my question then at the end of the day is 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 there anything that worries you or, or, or worries the I don't know if there's consensus among the community of researchers in the area if there's if there's the, the one thing that would get people to think maybe a little bit more seriously about the issue it's a really fair question I've heard Sam Harris talk about it myself as well and he, he makes the strong point that it's hard for us to appreciate something that we can't touch and feel and care exactly. about you know yeah. I mean? it's and not, it's something it's that's purely conceptual yet that we like you know people who are ex absolutely experienced in the area obviously they can yeah um, so anything that if your, your, your question is excuse me specifically about AGI more than anything uh, specifically about yeah. um, maybe this is the most melodramatic way of saying it but the, the rise of this yeah. um, superior intelligence to us um, yeah there's definitely reasons to fear but what I would say is that that's part of the human story and fear is part of survival you know, a, a prey in the wild survives partially because it is conscious that it's a prey, and that it has something to, to worry about. Now I'm conscious that I'm just made ourselves, made the human species into a prey, and therefore a, prey. a predator. We're no longer and, top of the and, food there, chain. and therefore there's a predator. So okay, yeah. So that's 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 something I just heard myself say and had not thought out. But there you go. Um, it's okay. Power ever does that to people. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, as my, my point still stands, though, it's important to fear because it involves us then it, 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 it results in us building up mechanisms to defend ourselves or at least it involves us thinking forward thinking properly I'll give you an example um, 
there's a researcher, uh, a woman called Kate Darling. I don't know if you've come across no. her. She started out as a journalist and she, she trained like to an undergrad, I think, or maybe a master's level, I don't know, uh, in social scientists in the state, okay. sciences in the States. And a while back, she was trying to write pieces on AI and on technology and bring it to the journalistic world, basically. And she went to MIT, uh, the media lab in MIT, uh, where you've got a load of guys working on AI developments. And she sat down and did interviews with them and asked all the kind of generic tech questions that they would expect to get and would be ready to answer. Okay. And <clears throat> through the process then of being of her being herself, I guess, she started asking questions that meant more to her as opposed to questions that were important to them as tech people. And they were kind of questions were like, well, when you have like robots embodied with AI ability or ANI or close to AGI ability, how does that start to affect the ethics of man, the law of man? For example, if you have something along the lines of a Westworld type robot walking yeah. down the street. Or it's indistinguishable from humans. Yeah, it's uncanny. Um, what happens if someone walks up and just chops that robot's head off? Is there is there repercussions for that? Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because immediately when these questions start getting put to the tech experts, they start to realize we're so focused on a narrow part of our area, we've never thought of these ethical kind of questions. So she actually ended up working for them, and she now works there, and her job is to kind of look after the ethical ponderings that might come yeah, out of AI. Yeah, that's, that's um, I forget the name of the company. It might actually have been Google, but there was a, when Google acquired, um, it might have been the DeepMind project, or another project that maybe was ancillary to that. But as mm. soon as they acquired it, they set up a board of artificial intelligence ethics. Yeah. And it's interesting that you mentioned the, the MIT people because everybody kind of has a regard for MIT. Mm. That if you either have made it in MIT, if you are studying there, mm. researching there, you are really cream of the crop when it comes to anything sure. technological or so. And, it's, and it's, it's interesting to see how even them, these very obviously clearly intelligent and skilled people could overlook something that's so it's so kind of necessary to even the human experience such as ethics and morality when it comes mm -hmm. to um but i suppose it just shows the oversight because they're so focused on whether or not this could be a reality or whether or not they could work towards making it a reality that this is something that just kind of fell off the radar yeah um so my question to you then would be about, I've heard Elon Musk talk about it, mm. I've heard Stephen Hawking talk about mm. it, um, about their fear. Mm. About, like, like, you mentioned fear being an evolutionary thing, but I mm. don't think, if you, look, if, if, if you asked somebody uh, whether or not they're more worried about global warming or artificial mm. intelligence, of course they're going to say global mm. warming. I would imagine the majority of mm. them would. Um, and the time horizon for that is in the hundreds of years or maybe even the thousands of years if you believe some researchers would you say that that these um clearly very intellectual people like elon musk and um uh people like elon musk yeah. um whether or not their fears are founded yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. whether or not their fears are founded yeah well their, their fears are founded and I'll, I'll get to that really quickly but just to, uh, something that just sprung to mind when you're talking is i think people need a reason they need they need something to bring it home in a close in, in a closer timeline to make them feel yeah. concerned to get them in on it and um actually bill gates brought it up about two weeks ago he said well what happens when you've got automation of jobs which is already coming, all right? It's already here. So it's already so here. I've been to. It's have, already you, here. I assume everybody's been to McDonald's and you've ordered off the yeah, screen yeah, now. Yeah. So, so, so number one, fear for your job. Number two, part of my health research um, involves me understanding or or under or, under, or knowing now the, the the age demographics in, in particularly in Europe and uh, Japan, for example, is a is the go to case example where there's low late low low birth rates high yeah. age rates like you know the, the, the aging, aging population is, is very yeah. much going up so when you have the aging population um, and you have people not working and you have robots automating where does tax come into the equation where do where does the services that we live in we i live did in? actually see about that bill gates was questioning the imposition of a tax on artificial intelligence and machines that would be taking over the jobs of humans yeah so number one they're taking over the jobs and number two the uh, 
the revenue commission ain't, got, ain't getting the money they're supposed to be getting mm. to help run the country. What was his argument? I didn't. I didn't actually. I, I've only very briefly heard. His, what was his, his argument, argument? Wasn't so much an argument. More, it was a more kind of what we're doing here, I suppose, in the sense of saying, here's something to think about. I mean, okay, he, he was putting yeah. forward. I suppose, well, if this is if this is going to happen, I if the robots are coming, if they're going to automate jobs, well, then we have to find out some form of a tax system for them. I don't know how you do that, but the tax issue definitely has to be asked because like it or lump but tax help tax systems help us live and breed within a city yeah they help us go to college they Absolutely. help us stay better they help us to learn more so on and so forth so would i suppose maybe maybe you're the wrong person to ask maybe bill gates is the right person <laughs> to ask maybe maybe you know what would you do is is it a fixed um is it an hourly sum for every hour of work that this robot does the, the business is liable to pay x amount in tax the same it would pay for a human employee yeah. or would it even get to the stage where they would actually be asked to pay more in tax yeah. uh, for the yeah. um machine or the computer that they have working instead of the human to incentivize employing people and, and let's 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 say that's the answer. Let's yeah. just go with. Let's just say because I don't know. But let's just say that is the answer. Let's say that is the solution. Here's something then to think about, though. Eventually, the automation is going to become so commonplace. Why do we need cash? True, you're getting into a Star Trekian society. It's, it's not <laughs> well. It it, it 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 doesn't take that long for it to happen after after high forms of automation come because all you need yeah. is automation to build other forms of auto. Elon Elon Musk Tesla factory. The Tesla cars—they're all their cars. They're 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 they're, they're, they're intelligent systems built by robots already. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There are very, there's, there's very few people working in his factory floor. Um. Uh. So I suppose what I'm really trying to say is, let's say we figure out a tax system to fix these issues. Those issues aren't going to be issues for long either. Yeah. At least, depending on what outlook you have, I can't. You know, I can't sit here and talk prophetically. But you know, the, the likelihood is that. Not the likelihood. What do you need cash for? You need cash to buy things. You need cash to buy food. You need cash to, you know. Are you, are you talking cash is in literal physical money or is in the concept of money altogether? Concept of money altogether, yeah. I suppose. Really. Um, I mean, we work at the moment so that we can buy luxury goods or goods that help us survive. Yeah. Um, when that work doesn't need to be done, the company that used to take our money has no reason to take our money either interesting d d does that make sense like you know yeah I, mean? I get you so so it's it's actually we've almost evolved or um beyond a stage of late stage capitalism yeah that, that it's gone from the you have to work to provide to everything's really provided for you through yeah. this automation so so there's actually a guy uh, really interesting he's a journalist as well and an academic paul mason has wrote a book called post post capitalism um He's head of arts for digital of arts for Channel Four, and uh, he basically tackles the issue, or tries to tackle the issue, yeah. I should say. Um, his kind of main pondering out of the book is that we move towards uh, post-capitalism, uh, aka a sharing economy. And he doesn't mean sharing economy as in like apps like Uber and whatnot, but yeah. like a real sharing economy because we have no need to capitalize by way of financial maximization anymore. Is this almost a late stage? capitalism post capitalism is his argument to drift almost closer to socialism or no, what because socialism is embedded in having a money system having needs and wants and having, yeah 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 and having need this is kind of like as i said before we we work because industry requires us because capitalism requires yeah us. when there is no need for work we're left with ourselves we're left with you, you, like your question one of your questions earlier on was like where does this go yeah. Where does this whole AI conversation go? And let's assume that everything ends up. Let's assume AI develops in a positive sense. That there's no bad stories, and it just automates all the work nicely. Um, so we're left. And everyone's happy, and, and we everyone's just we happy. just sit along and enjoy the ride. Uh, sit along and enjoy the ride. Well, then, when you're left to think, that's what you're left to do. You're left to think. Well, well, that's interesting because I did mention Star Trek earlier, and yeah. that is actually the premise of the universe in which Star Trek is set in. Right. Now, they have a whole star date system, so I don't know exactly how right. far right. away in the future they yeah. are. Yeah. But their entire yeah. society is based around the fact that we're good. Everybody's just enjoying the ride at this stage. Everybody is provided for in one way or another. It's right so it's location. just, do you want to go into space? Is this what you want to do? You could, you could very easily, if you wanted to, sit back and do absolutely nothing yeah. with your life. Or you could go um, and actually provide some sort of a service. Again, 
if you want yeah yeah um and that would be a kind of a society that is based um a society that has to be founded on some sort of level of automation yeah but just to because I'm, I'm i'm absolutely appreciative of the fact that some people might find this a little bit obscure or abstract. oh it's fine look so whatever let, let me make this this conversation a little bit more accessible if we have job te- automation hitting hitting the max yeah just as high as it can go there's a two 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 academics in uh, Oxford produced a paper last year called the future of employment, and I looked at industries that will first get affected and most severely get affected by automation, and at the bottom of the list, i.e., those worst affected, it's transport, isn't it? Transports there, telemarketers, insurance underwriters, tax preparers, accountants, and clerks, bank tellers, credit and analysts, bookkeepers, cargo and freight agents. Top of the list. Yeah. This is a list of seven hundred. Okay? Is, is 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 this top of the list the people that are least, gonna be okay? Are they're gonna be okay loads of work. until the very, very end. Loads of work. People who excel in emotional intelligence, recreational therapists, Cre- uh, creativity, occupa- yeah. Creativity, occupational therapists, uh, um, social workers, mm. uh, people who work in mental health, people who work in substance abuse uh, help, um firefight firefighter directors, that yeah. kind of thing. So things that require true human interaction. So if we Automate our way out of the kind of menial jobs, work. Menial, I, I don't. Again, I don't want to. Let's not say menial. Let's say menial. Jobs that are very much based in defined process. Uh, yes, defined process. Go back and to logic our and input processing and output. We, yeah, yes. we go back to our pro- process or the computer definition earlier on. We go. We get when we when we automate all those roles that can be clearly defined. Yes, we're left with the ones that are that have an A, B, uh, and a C to them. Yeah. In fact, um, there's a guy called Kevin Kelly um, who set up Wired magazine in the '90s. Yeah, he has a really nice way of putting it. He says that um, the role of AI is to take care of efficient tasks, and the human role will be to take care of inefficient tasks, like research, scientific trial and error, yeah. emotional intelligence-based tasks. So our roles will, be, will, be, will, will rest in those, as I said, that are inefficient, that require true social interaction. So that kind of point almost in a way solves the ethical and the moral quandary to it if, if well, it it's, leaves us with not much else to do but worry exactly about it. <laughs> but it, it yeah, leaves yeah, us with yeah. not very much else to do except program or our or could you even program an artificial intelligence that's another question just a quick one well yeah that's program artificial well it wouldn't really be artificial intelligence if it's purely programmed but, yeah yeah uh, that would be an arrow intelligence no, okay okay perfect um but but to it would leave us up to the point where we would be really just trying to um take care of ourselves i mentioned it um earlier was the sitting back and enjoying the ride and making sure um everybody's health and kind of well-being was cared for and not just the um because because a lot of i would say a huge amount of everybody's mental brain power is is tasked with okay um i have to go get a job now and i have to yeah. do this job so i can earn why am i earning i'm earning to make yeah. money i'm making money to buy food i'm yeah. buying food to stay alive yeah. and so on and so forth so having this level of automation and this kind of um in this dystopian star trekian hmm. society that lets us think about the more important things yeah. Um, God, that's that's heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's heavy well, it, to borrow. It, 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 borrow has, it has been it has been said by a lot of deep thinkers. There, I use the term uh, and philosophers and academics that the quest for artificial, in, like for true artificial intelligence, will be our final challenge. Yeah, will be our greatest achievement, assuming that it's done correctly, which is where the fear comes in again. It has to be done correctly. It has to be done correctly. Um, that's something I'd actually like to stress: done correctly. So. I'm actually going to go, it's, it's going to, almost going to sound like I'm going slightly sidetracked for a moment, but there are incredibly um, complex tax codes in place throughout the world. Um, there are incredibly complex uh, systems so that people um, are supposedly um, going to pay their due to society so that the people earning more are going to get taxed at their higher tax rate and the people that are um, maybe contributing less or again getting less taken um, off of them um, these are incredibly complex tax codes that are you know thought upon for, for years at a time by some very intelligent people yet time and time again loopholes have been found and ways and shortcuts have been found and and 
the, the easiest example to think of is have you ever have you ever heard of any very wealthy person in Ireland any, any very well, wealthy person in Ireland they first of all they don't live in Ireland <laughs> they they may be here for the 179 days a year that uh, they like to spend here but the rest of the time the other 108 days a year they're living in the Cayman Islands that yeah. they can claim their tax residency there and pay nothing um it's it's just an example of a loophole and a shortcut and a way to really in, in all honesty it's more efficient um for for you know um in relation to the person mm. who's dodging the tax mm. so the question is what's to stop an artificial intelligence if i say something like i think the the most um kind of impactful definition that i heard was asking an artificial intelligence system um to cure cancer mm. in humans yeah and I, you know exactly where I'm going with yes, this. Well, the easiest way, okay, one of, I'm not going to say the easiest way, but one of the ways to cure artifici- or to um, cure cancer in humans was well, just to kill all the humans. Okay, yeah, then there's no more cancer. And there's no more cancer in humans. That's that's a fact. The problem your, has your, been your, solved. Your, your option is to turn every human into a test subject, and then everybody's just submitted to testing. Like everybody's that. submitted to testing, and eventually we'll get it. And then you know? person it's, it's the most it. efficient way to do it, is to submit absolutely everybody to testing, test everybody at once. We'll find some, some form of a cure, or they'll all be dead. Exactly. And one way or the other, other and um, we will have cured cancer in humans the other is yeah. can you please fetch me water okay what's to stop me from fetching the water from inside you yeah, yeah. um so the question is coming back around to it is is do you think there's any way in which humans even possess the mental capacity um to program this or uh, again I'm, gonna, I'm not i'm not gonna use the word program yeah, but yeah. but to set forth enough guidelines in issuing the instructions so that we don't eventually doom us all yeah yeah so what you're what you're touching on there is the asi is the super intelligence yeah something that is accumulatively more powerful than us more intelligent than us and we can treat it like an oracle of sorts and say okay cure cancer but we have to be happy with the objective that we give it and not only the objective but the stipulations we provide exactly, there's, there's a board yeah. of ethics and all drugs trials there's ethics involved in pretty much everything that yeah. we do there yeah. are committees so yeah so the like what what's what is happening you have like to, to, to talk about sam harris again his 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 research purpose is to explore is there such a thing as a mor- is, as morality can morality be truly defined and if we can define morality can we take that definition and then transfer it into an ASI or into an AGI because if we can do that we can sleep easy with our AGI and our ASI because morality yeah. is the, the study of how to decide what's right and what's wrong so if we build a system that doesn't even contemplate what's right and what's wrong we are victim to how poor an order we give it as I said, if we say, or as you said, if we say cure cancer and say nothing else in our sentence yeah. after that. Can you cure cancer? It'll it kill day. everything. Possibly. Done. But you have to, if, if we're going to have something like that, then you have to give it very, very, very direct guidance. There was um, Isaac Amazov, I think, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name properly. Uh, many, many years ago, I came up with his his robot, the three, three laws of, of robotics and how you oh, build something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I watched iRobot. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in that too, yeah. <laughs> is, um, it, is it Mendel's law? No? No, Asimov. Asimov, Asimov. okay. Uh, yeah. Where he says, step one, the robot should not harm uh, any human. Step number two, it should obey any law or order that's given by a human. And step three, it must protect its, its existence only as long as it doesn't conflict with law one and law two. And if you, you know, build in these kind of ethical laws, maybe yeah. we're self-preserving ourselves. Um, then you got people like, uh, I'll go back to Nick Bostrom. He's the philosopher uh, in the UK. Who he's basically saying that he doesn't believe that as a species, uh, humans will not produce ANI or AGI and ASI until we've found out how to truly understand morality. Um, other people like David Dooch who is an other professor in the UK he says that's a load of baloney and he says that when we get to ASI ASI will teach us what's good Interesting. versus bad well it, it almost but so as you can see yeah. the experts don't even agree yet it almost seems kind of counterintuitive that humans and so far anyway there has been no human that is um an expert in all matters there is no human that is both um the peak professional athlete as well as um the best clinical psychologist in the world as well as a computer scientist and an astrophysicist nothing like that exists mainly because it kind of goes beyond the 
human capacity, our our processor, if you want to call our brain the processor. It's not capable of doing all that at once, and we don't we don't have the capacity um, to perform that sort of role. So the the fact that we could even not only comprehend but understand and be able to build something that might be Mm -hmm. um it doesn't seem plausible no we're going my only argument we're going deeply into the unknown yeah as i said it's it's so it's so obvious to the point where the absolute leaders in the area or thought leaders in the area totally contradict each other one says we must get there philosophically before the machine and another one says the machine will bring us there and these are two leaders in the area um so there's another reason to worry. <laughs> there's another reason to worry. But, but um, I suppose it almost brings forth the argument of how could a computer even have an understanding of ethics or morality, or is that not something that's kind of yeah. um, inbuilt in us and is a product yeah, so of yeah. what nurture rather than nature? It's a really fair point. Um, like one of the big questions, if, 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 if you listen or read any of the text in this area, is, um, is it actually, like, first of all, what is consciousness? And then can you replicate consciousness, consciousness in a machine? Um, a very basic definition or explanation of what consciousness is, is to know, to truly know your, the action you're taking. And if a computer is only ever producing an output based on something it has learned, does it really understand you know, life? Does it really understand the thoughts that are in your head as you're sitting here thinking to me? Or is it really just following a script? And you know, are, is that very, is that different from being conscious? I say yes, it is. Some people will say, no, we can we can replicate consciousness. I don't know, um, but yeah, that's, that's so you you would you would almost describe consciousness um, almost as a kind of a self awareness. It's the absolute form of self. The absolute form of self. Sentient being, and yeah, that can feel and perceive. <sighs> I, I don't <laughs> you know what it's it's I'm I'm gonna have to listen back to this I've heard every word you've said yeah, yeah, very yeah. clearly I've yeah. got nice headphones on there's a lovely high definition microphone in front of you yeah I've heard everything you've said yeah, yeah and yeah. I've, I've made I've, I'll describe this as I've listened to everything you've said I don't know if I've heard everything you yeah, said no, no, I might have to listen back to this one um well, what, I, what I will say is this is one of the reasons why I enjoyed getting into the topic in my own in my own uh, course in time. Um, is because when I started off as a student I entered into a world where business is business, social study is social study and technology is technology and there's no crossing of the tree or of the two yeah. depending on which two you want to talk about but such is this human story that we're all part of such is this move towards artificial intelligence that the beautiful thing is now we start we have to bring social concern and technology together and that this is like this is what's happening where everything else in society is slowly drifted towards the middle so too yeah. does um this notion of uh, both kind of the object of reality and kind of bla- objective logic yeah um as well as human ethics and morality yeah it's it's it requires thought, and it's going to. It require. requires thought, yeah. It's like, thoughts, thoughts are difficult. Thoughts are hard. Yeah, tell me about it, man. No, no, no. Um, personal thoughts are hard. It's very easy to hear something else that somebody has said and to say, "I agree with this" or "I don't agree with Absolutely. that." That's really easy. Thinking is very difficult. Yeah, but I must say, to be honest with you, I think like the fact that people are talking about this is brilliant. Yeah, because it's requiring people to get you know up to speed uh, with what's going on in society as opposed to what's going on in the Facebook feed. I understand? Yeah, um, yeah. I think no matter no matter what way that happens, that's only a good thing. Um, and again, such is reality that we're all going to mm. get. We're all we're, yeah. we all interact with this technology all the time, and the more we interact with it, the more we're feeding it, and the more we we're have. feeding it, the better it's getting. The more it's learning, the more so on. And we're so all forth. great people, and we're not giving any bad examples. Oh God! <laughs> so. I'll give you a question. Um, is are you worried? Um, the direct answer is no. I'm not worried. I'm excited. You're not worried, but I appreciate the need for worry. You appreciate the need for the little bit of fear, so that yeah. we do this correctly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we don't build that machine that gets rid of cancer by getting rid of all of us. That we get rid. That we build a machine that. Gets, so it's a tentative optimism. Yeah. Well, no, like it, it, it's. I, I, I am totally optimistic, and I'm totally excited yeah. about it, but. I'm also a human and I understand the human story. I understand that anything that's ever good that has happened has happened by way of lots of checking, you know, and lots of, 
you know, literally lots of making sure that this is the right yeah. thing and it's been done the right way and then you get the best final product. So I'm excited to go through that process. Trial and error, as opposed to just let's hope let's hope it's okay. Okay. You know? My God. Um listen, I I was I was gonna I was gonna feed you another question or two, but I don't think they um stack up to anywhere near um <laughs> kind of look the caliber of the conversation we've had so far. So I think I'm gonna leave it there for today. Is there anything um else you'd like to say at the very end, or is there any where you'd like people to go or any any social media you'd like to pimp or anything like that? Um no, I am not someone who draws my own social media or anything like that. I don't you know but what I would what I would recommend is if people are in any way in, in interested in things to do with emotion emotions society or technology which literally is everybody when yeah. you think about it well then i advise them to get to grips with this topic and you can do that very very easily through podcasts through what you're doing yeah. for example uh look up sam harris if you want yeah i think i think i think this medium that we're doing here is one of the best because yeah. it's one of the most uh, pe- people are a lot more prone to listening to things than they are to reading obviously it'd be much easier to read this you could read the transcript of what we wrote here in 15 20 minutes if you wanted to but again it would take you you could do other things so i think it's really Im- I- I- important to have this kind of media that you can stick in your car you can yeah. stick some headphones in and do the ironing while you're doing it yeah. it's also pleasant to hear the human interaction oh it is of course you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Which, which yeah which only adds to, to to the point like but yeah just as i said sam harris or who else is there like, i think neil deGrasse tyson, neil deGrasse tyson, tyson the, that particular really, one with yeah. neil deGrasse tyson what, what, is I, would, what I would why, why i why i say to a lot of people sam harris is because i listen to a lot of different experts in the area but he's the best at. Oh, expert! You just said they were an expert. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I listen to people who are well versed. Well versed, the well educated. He, he on would the topic. be the best at using language that's accessible. Yeah, no, he's he's a very excellent orator. He uses words in all the right uh, all the all the right spots. He uses yeah. good examples and stuff. Um, and if you want just a good time on the topic, Joe Rogan courses sometimes. Oh come on, big fan. Always a big fan. He'll 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 Joe's lend you. Good, man. Do you know Joe's what? Good. Joe will lend you more of a my perspective of whoa, yeah, that's yeah. whoa. You need that. You yeah. Need that man. Gosh. Oh yeah. Okay, listen. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having um, me. Um, no problem at all. Uh, we will be back. Uh, not next week, unfortunately. Um, that's Paddy's week. We're not actually going to do a show that week. But the week after, um, we have a. Uh, a YouTuber coming in called Sean Connolly. He is work. He has his own personal YouTube channel and the thousands of subscribers, as well as um, he works for the Facts YouTube channel. Um, he is kind of he is an employee. He is he is the start or he is um, a main part of the new wave of internet companies. So I hope you'll join us then for that. And um, thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you next week. Broken, the school's closed, the prison's open We ain't got nothing to lose, everybody